Do you suck at MSP sales or do you suck at MSP marketing? And in this video, I'm going to break down with you the entire sales and marketing process so you can pinpoint exactly what you're doing wrong and that way you can fix it with the information in this video. My name is Harrison Marin from growth-generators.com. We help MSPs grow, whether it's sales training, marketing, or even business operations. I've been super fortunate. A lot of you guys have been reaching out, coming hang out with us in the Discord. Before I continue with this video, I just want to mention one thing. Down in the video description, there are a ton of super helpful links. Those links could be the Discord, growth-generators.com forward slash Discord, resources, which is forward slash resources. There are so many other super helpful links from the hardware that I use to other videos I recommend and even master classes down below. I would highly recommend going and checking those out for every video. I try to change it up on as many videos as I can, but some of you guys absolutely love certain videos. So I try to leave a couple on there that seem to follow all the way through. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, MSP Heroes, available on all platforms, there will be links down in the podcast description as well. So Let's figure out if you suck at MSP marketing or MSP sales. And there will be a clear divider through this process. I'm going to sketch it out here in my super top secret multi-billion dollar software, Microsoft Paint. And I, I say that kiddingly, but in all honesty, we're going to find exactly where you're going wrong because you might not actually think you are going wrong in a certain area. And we can actually measure these things depending on the platform that we are using. But let's talk about some of the common problems that we see in marketing because you might realize right off the bat, there is a red alarm that goes off in your head, right? Low traffic or low leads, which is probably the worst, right? Most people always want more leads, but legitimately low traffic is something super important. Worse than low traffic is actually low engagement. If you get low traffic, but you get really high engagement, that's a good thing. But if you get low traffic and low engagement, or if you get really high traffic with really, really low engagement, it should be setting off a red flag. Another massive problem I see when marketing is actually targeting the wrong audience. Now, MSPs are notorious for not doing any marketing. Trust me, I know, but you can, but you have to make sure that you're doing the marketing correctly and you're actually targeting the right audience. Next is gonna be an unclear value proposition, right? You people need to know what you do and how you do it. If it isn't written out in the most plain language across your website, what you do, how you help those people, it is absolutely gone. Now, what are the most common problems with sales? I'm sure you guys are getting it, right? No leads, or, or better yet, lots of leads with no conversions. You're getting a bunch of leads in the door, and they're just not crossing that threshold where they're putting money in your pocket. The second part of this, and I hope this is nobody watching the channel, but poor follow-up. Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how many people make one call to the lead, it is crazy. But also, in a, on a serious note, you can't handle objections. They're saying, well, your price is too high. Well, how do I, I'm too small for hackers. The list goes on and on. I'm not ready, you know, I need to talk to my partner. There's always an objection. And if you can't clearly overcome those objections, you are missing out on money. And you're also not qualifying the lead properly. You're not going through, you're kind of jumping to the, hey, let me get a proposal in your hands. And you're not even seeing if they're a good fit for your business or if they're a good fit for you, right? Or vice versa, right? You're a good fit for them. They're a good fit for you. Happy marriage, right? We are in a partnership. As much as we are managed service providers, we are managed solutions providers, and we are managed service partners. I guess in a lot of ways, because we truly are making that connection in so many ways to those customers. So let's actually talk about diagnosing this. Let's jump into my ultra fancy, super billion dollar software called Microsoft Paint, where I'm gonna walk you through this process. So right off the bat, we have the most important thing, and that's gonna be that person here. And I hope that my drawing skills are up to par because I did spend years and years in art school. But we have this person here. Um, 
Sid the Sloth maybe with those eyes, but that's okay. We're not judging my art, right? This person here comes in through something, right? Where are they coming in from? We have to think about this as this actually goes through, and hopefully this pen is a little bit better here. Most of the time, they are going to hit your website, right? And I'm just going to write W, 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 and they're going to go to your website in one way or another. This could be an ad. This could be a blog. This is so hard to do. I should have done this on the whiteboard, but hey, uh, I'm not moving everything in my office at this hour. Uh, ad, blog, it could be from SEO, it could be from a referral, something of that nature. Now, on your website, they should see something that brings them to a landing page. And this landing page is going to be designed to convert. Now, specifically what it's going to be, oh, I could type in here. We are going to talk about a call to action. We need to make sure that they are seeing and getting a call to action to go through that landing page. It's really, really important that they do that because if they're not hitting a call to action to go to a landing page, learn more, download our free worksheet, get a dark web scan, something of that nature to get them to a landing page there is nothing valuable happening, right? We have massive loss of value. They want something. Now, a certain percentage of these people are going to go through and hopefully book a meeting, which is the ultimate goal here. And uh, we're, oh, we're getting fancy with this. I'm not really much of a Microsoft painter, believe it or not. Um, in my many years of school, but we want them to go to some kind of booking or some kind of lead gen demand of one way or another. Book a meeting, get a discovery call, something that's going to generate the actual lead. Yes, they will be coming through and we will be getting their information here, which technically they would be a lead here, but they're not a serious lead. They're just a basic run-of-the-mill lead. When we get to actually booking and lead gen, they are very, they are, they are qualified to a degree. They have gotten some kind of information that says, hey, I need to move forward with this process. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing for you, right? If they're making it to this point here, we are doing very good in the marketing category. Now, after they actually book a meeting, you should have some Something that happens in your CRM and that CRM is going to say you have a new hopefully sales qualified lead right and that could be a lead interest a whatever you want to call it at the top of your CRM but you want to have something there that says sales qualified lead or something of that nature and they're still gonna keep coming through right CRM, sales qualified lead, you should be getting a notification, should pop up clear as day. Hey, we have a new lead in that system. From here, you are going to go through and we're going to start the sales process. And just to make my life easier and keeping that left to right, we're going to start back down here. From here, they should be, be doing one thing, right? They've already kind of booked their appointment. If they haven't already and you're having a salesperson reach out, booked appointment. I'm going to just do booked appointment there from that booked appointment. Then you actually have to go on site, go on site, go on site and deliver that appointment. Right? So some people write appointment attended, right? App a T T appointment attended, whatever you want to call it is totally up to you. You could call it a discovery day. You could call it a, First on-site appointment, first initial appointment, FIP, whatever you want to call it. There's no exact term for it. Every industry has their kind of own one. But the appointment has been attended. You had gone on-site with somebody or yourself to fully do an in-depth dive of their environment. Now, if you determine that they're a good fit for you, then we now know that we need to move forward with the next step in the process. We need to then build them a proposal. So I'm gonna be build, build proposal. I'm keeping it super short and sweet here because once again, this is uh, once I make a mistake, I can't really unmake that mistake. So we have a build proposal in there. So in in this arena, right? What exactly are we going to be doing after we build that proposal? And most people, and little golden nugget here, if you've made it this far in the video and you've hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, I swear. 
if you send a proposal and you're not there in person on a Zoom call or a Teams call, I'm going to go to your office and yell mean things at you and I'm going to show you pictures of server closets that look like spaghetti and I'm going to make sure that you look at these things all day and they make you angry because you have to. Please, please, please send the proposal in person, right? I used to send it about five minutes before I had showed up. So that way they had just a couple quick minutes to review it. If I was doing it over Zoom, once again, five minutes before, sometimes I wouldn't even send it beforehand. I would just bring that in hand with me. And that would be what I would go to war with. It's just a piece of paper and a pen. So that way they could sign right on the dotted line there. But that's truly where you want to get to. But what happens after you build the proposal, right? And we kind of just mentioned it. You're going to deliver that proposal. Deliver the proposal. Now, after you deliver that proposal, there is really only two things that can come from this in most cases. They're going to say yes, they're going to say no, or they're going to say maybe, right? And maybe just means you got to follow up a lot. Yes, which is the thing that we want. Hopefully, if we want to do business with them, you shouldn't be delivering proposals that you don't want to, but they're going to say yes, or they're going to say no. And that is your entire process from sale, from better yet, from marketing all the way to sale. Is this slightly over oversimplified? Absolutely. But believe it or not, this is the entire process. This person, which I feel bad because I didn't draw him in the right, uh, the right ink here, but this person over here uh, should be right coming from an ad going through some kind of blog post, something of that nature, landing on the website, requesting more information, and then they finally become a lead. We're gonna get a couple bits of information here. We're hopefully gonna get a first name, a last name, a phone number, and hopefully a email address. This is where that actually happens on that call to action. In some cases, if it doesn't happen right there, it's gonna happen right after that landing page one or the other people put it in all different areas there's no right or wrong but that first name last name phone number and email address can happen either right in between the website to the landing page or in between that landing page and booking that lead generation now i said in the beginning of this video that i was going to show you exactly where things are going wrong and if you've made it this far and you've hit the like button, you've hit the subscribe button, you hit the notification bell, and hopefully you're learning something and you're putting that down below, now I'm gonna show you how to actually diagnose where you're going wrong. I know, I apologize for dragging you through this whole thing, but I can't just tell you without actually showing you where it actually happens. So let's dive back into here and I'm gonna use some red ink because it's terrifying and we're gonna run through it, right? So what I always recommend people do is never start from the front. You cannot start from up here. It's never going to work. We actually need to start all the way in the back of the sales funnel because we want to work backwards to figure out where we're actually having the problem. And that problem could be, hey, first, are we delivering proposals? If we're delivering proposals, great. And if we're not, we have to keep moving forward, right? So are we are we building proposals? If we're not, once again, you have to keep moving forward through the pipeline to figure out where you're going. But you want to make sure that if, if it's not happening, you step one step back through this entire process. So are you closing deals? Yes, great. Are you closing deals? No? Okay. Back to are we delivering proposals? If your answer is yes, we're delivering a bunch of proposals and people aren't buying Boom, red flag, that should be right there to tell you, hey, something's going on. But if you're not delivering proposals, then are we building proposals to be delivered and they're just not getting delivered, right? If we're building a lot of proposals, great. Then we now know that maybe we're not delivering proposals. But if we're not even building proposals, we have to take, you guessed it, one step back. Are we attending appointments, right? Appointment attended. If the answer is yes, great. You're good there. If the answer is no, once again, you guessed it. We have to step back through the process. Are we booking appointments? And I have a dramatically long pause there because this is typically where people go wrong. They are not booking appointments. And this, great. If we're not booking appointments, guess what we do? We take one step back. 
Are we identifying sales qualified leads or leads that are interested? Are they in our CRM, our customer relationship manager? If you don't have a customer relationship manager, quick little pause, go high level. I absolutely love HubSpot, another fantastic platform. Salesforce, not so great in my opinion, but some people, it has a cult following behind it. Pipedrive, there are keep by Infusionsoft. There are so many out there. Just pick the one. If you are bootstrapping, I would prefer I would recommend HubSpot because it is free to start off with. If you're not bootstrapping, I would recommend personally go high level. If you're interested in getting go high level and a bunch of other resources, I do have a membership called MSP Heroes. I will leave a link down below. It actually comes with a CRM that you can use for your business. No strings attached. It's just part of your membership there and you get a ton of other stuff as well. So if you don't have a CRM, right, then or or you're not seeing people show up in your CRM and you're like, hey, okay, well, are we booking or is there or is it generating leads? If the answer is no, great. Do we have landing pages built? If the answer is no there, do we have a website? And if the answer is no there, right, do we have any ads? Do we have any blog posts currently up? Do we have any of those things that are currently happening? And if the answer is no, you're probably just starting out. But somewhere through there, you have to work through it backwards. Your entire system should look eerily similar to this in 99.9 .9 cases. You should be 100% have this built out in your CRM. Booking lead generation, or better yet, CRM, sales qualified lead, your book, booked appointment, appointment attended, building proposal, proposal delivered, and then if you want to have a follow-up, some people like to have a follow-up, or yes or no. This whole section right here, I'll do it in green, but this whole section should be built out in your CRM. Bar none, there's no excuse not to have it. There's free CRMs, including HubSpot, out there, but you have to follow this entire process from the get-go. But if you're not getting leads, you have to keep moving back over and over and over again until you find the point in which you're not getting those leads, right? Are you finding or are you identifying sales qualified leads? No. Do you have something that's creating lead generation for you? If the answer is no, do you have landing pages? If the answer is, I hope to God everyone has a website here, but do you have landing pages that are designed to convert traffic? If the answer is no, do you actually have a website? And if the answer is no, I wouldn't even get involved with ads or SEO or blogs or anything like that, but build the website and that should flow all the way through this entire process. But this is truly how you go through and figure out are you doing the right thing? Are you burning money? Are you wasting money? Or are you actually just, I'm really stuck on one part? If the answer is no, you move one step back and I promise you, you will say, it'll light up like a light bulb. It might not be right after you finish this video, but you'll, it'll, it'll just click and you'll say, oh, we are, we're attending appointments, but we're not building proposals. Are we not getting enough information in that attended appointment to build out the proposals? It's just going dry there. And you'll see a pretty noticeable difference inside of your CRM where your deals are actually happening. But that is truly the process that you have to follow in order to succeed through sales and marketing with your MSP. I promise you, you can do it. If you're struggling, check out MSP Heroes. We have open office hours for MSP business owners. You could jump in there. I will happily walk through it with you as long as you're okay with sharing the class or sharing with the class, but it is not as bad as you think it is. We just have to pinpoint the exact part where you're going wrong. And you could follow this exact step by step and say, hey, there it is. That's where I'm going wrong. This is where I need to focus. And you can immediately make a massive, massive change in your MSP. Hope you guys found some value in this video. Once again, like, subscribe, notify. Let me know in the comments down below if you learned something. Other than that, I appreciate the heck out of you guys. Love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.